Welcome, I'm Wes, the sewing machine repair guy. Today we're gonna do some geeking out. We're gonna take this machine apart, see what makes it work. And we're also going to take some measurements, some electrical measurements, and see if this thing really is a heavy duty sewing machine. Stick around. Let's get started with our teardown of the Singer Heavy Duty Sewing Machine. The needle that it ships with is a Singer 9014. There's the bottom. So you got some metal rails here around the plastic frame. And you can indeed tell that this has a metal frame under there. Here's that stainless steel bed that they're talking about. The stainless steel part is just, I mean, that is really thin layer of stainless steel on there. I mean, it looks good. I'm sure it provides some sort of, some amount of strength on here, but I think it's more just for show than anything else. There's your top cover, so only two screws and then the rest are clips. And it appears as though I may have broken a clip right there. That's one reason I don't like plastic clips. Okay, so the back cover was actually pretty easy to get off. Uh, no clips that were keeping it attached. Uh, you don't need to pull this little guy out to get the back cover off. And that is how you reach an adjustment down there. We'll figure out what that is later. Okay, we're almost there. So there's usually a hidden screw for the front cover. Uh, we usually have something over here. Yep, there's one. So that one will come out now. And then there's usually one somewhere hidden in the middle. You either get to it from the back or from the front. Uh, actually, this will be the back. And I think I see it right in there. Right back there, you see where the screwdriver just went in? So there's a screw there that holds the front cover on. So you got to go through a hole in the back to get to. Now, is that the last screw? 
Okay, we feel pretty loose. Don't forget, you want to take these off sometimes. You get your fingers in there and just pull. That is compression fit. Don't uh, be afraid that you're going to break it. Although if you do break it, don't complain to me. <laughs> these are just hard to get. Go. Okay. How are we doing? Feel pretty loose. I'm hitting something. Okay, see this right here? So we got to push and go around that. And we should be able to angle it and then pull it up right there. And there's the front cover. We are in there. This is the metal frame for the Singer Heavy Duty. There's a little piece of flashing right there, a little piece of metal came off. So let's take a look around at this sewing machine. Right away I can see that, you know, your bobbin case right here is a standard bobbin case for most Singer machines and Brother for that matter. Uh, your hook is a metal hook and the whole hook assembly is all made out of metal. So like I said, uh, um, or like I've said in previous videos, there's some machines that come with a plastic hook assembly. And that's no good. All right, so let's look around. Like I said, this is loose because we've loosened it up. I didn't remove that screw. I usually, when you have these fork style tabs, I don't remove the screw. That way I won't lose the screw if it's still installed in the machine. And this one, in fact, has an extra piece on it. So it's just kind of dangling, which is okay. So let's look at, first off, this is called a heavy duty machine. So is it really heavy duty? That metal is pretty substantial. Now this is going to be the cheapest metal that they can get their hands on, probably a Zamac. Um, I mean, it could be aluminum and, you know, maybe one day I'll figure out how to test for those different types of metals. But as of right now, it is just metal. However, I do have a way to tell at least how hard it is. But I'm going to tell you this is probably a very soft metal because I believe Zamac and aluminum are both soft metals. So we're going to go with the softest hardness scale and I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a mark right in there. Yeah, that made a pretty good mark. So that's the softest uh, scale that I have, which is uh, 40 HRC, Rockwell, 40 Rockwell. And so, yeah, just like I said, that is a soft type metal, which is okay uh, for the frame. Now, what I like to do uh, is take a look at the operation of the hook. The hook is a rotating hook, vice an oscillating hook. And if you notice on my last video when we did some sewing with this, it's a very smooth sewing uh, machine. So that makes sense that we have a rotating hook so it doesn't oscillate back and forth. It continues to rotate in the same direction. And that makes for a smooth operating machine. Next, we're going to follow the torque from the motor. Our motor here has a plastic gear on it. So first off, we're starting with plastic. Um, in this case, we have a reduction in speed. So we have an increase in torque, which means you're going to have more torque up here. So that's OK. It's actually OK to have a plastic gear on the motor. I'm not real happy with it, but it's going to survive. Uh, and with today's plastic, these gears are last a little bit longer than uh, Grandma Singer that had some plastic gears in it that just disintegrated over time. So today's plastic is a little bit better than that. And we have a belt drive, which these have been uh, proving themselves over the years to, to last. They do last. Those uh, belts actually last a little bit because there's nothing in here that's going to end up cutting those belts. Then we come up to the top and our torque. So our torque starts out at the motor. 
and it comes up to the upper shaft via this gear right here that goes around here. And then that gear goes to the shaft, the upper shaft. So far, I have plastic gear on the motor, plastic gear up on the upper shaft, and then I have, and this is a big honking plastic gear, and it actually honks, no, just kidding. But it's a big plastic gear, goes down to this metal shaft, and I'm following the metal shaft over here. So we have plastic to plastic to metal. Needle bar is metal, and there's all metal connection to the shaft, the upper shaft, to that needle. So that's a good thing. It is heavy duty. We're using all metal from where the torque comes in on the upper shaft all the way down to the needle, so it's gonna have a lot of force behind that needle. All right, now let's find the torque on our lower shaft. So we come back across, and then we see a plastic gear. So now we have another plastic gear. It's pretty, uh, pretty beefy gear, but it is plastic. And then it goes to a rubber belt. This is the gear that sends the torque down to the lower shaft. So we'll flip it over and get to our lower shaft. And we looked at this earlier, but our lower shaft has a metal gear from that belt. And then something else you'll notice, okay, this lower shaft starts here, goes all the way through to this end over here. And when I look at the bushings holding the shaft in place, I've got one here and I've got one here. Both of them have a felt pad meaning that they are designed to be oiled. Now, if you noticed when I took this machine apart, the first thing I did was after taking off the front piece was you go down to the bottom and there were two, four, six screws on this plate, which would pull this off and you could get to this. And then there were two screws on this plate where you could get to this. So it is designed to be operated. It is designed to be maintained as well. So I like the Singer Heavy Duty because Singer is looking at, hey, you're going to have to maintain this machine to keep it running for years and years. When this is installed, it looks like this. And then you pull this off and you have access to both of the upper bushings, the one on this side and the one right here. So you can oil this machine by yourself. And just like me, when you pull off this top piece, you could break a piece off of it, break a tab off of it. It's still gonna be just fine in the long run, but you can get in there. It's somewhat designed for the user to actually oil this machine. So good on you, Singer. Thank you very much. You've made machines that we can maintain from time to time. So not bad. The motor is an AC motor, 0.8 amps, 6,000 RPM. Uh, they do have stronger motors out there. You can get a one amp motor. And, um, you know, based on the video that I did, and I'll put a little card up there for that video, but I did a video where I upgraded the motor in a sewing machine. And as I look at these sewing machines, it's possible to do that for all different kinds of sewing machines. Uh, this one included. So you could upgrade that motor if you wanted to. The only problem you run into is finding the right gears to match. Um, but I think this motor is probably sufficient. But we are going to test that either later in this video or it's going to be a part two, depending on how long this video ends up being. So now we're going to follow our torque. So we've got a metal gear going through the shaft, the metal shaft, to another metal gear which goes up to your hook to operate your hook. Your hook also has a metal gear on it. So inside here, your hook has a metal gear. So this is metal on metal on metal. That's really good for this sewing machine. This is a heavy duty sewing machine because I'm seeing metal on metal on metal for all these gears. So good job Singer on this heavy duty. Uh, so far, I like what I see and I'm believing when you say it's a heavy duty. So when you follow the torque through this sewing machine, you've got metal to metal to metal to metal, which is good. There are three places where we have plastic involved and then two belts. Sewing machines have been using belts for many years. I think the belts are not a problem. My industrial machines use belts. They may be a little bigger, 
but I don't have a problem with belts. I do have a problem with the, the plastic. Uh, in this case, the way they've mitigated the problems with the, the plastic, that first gear from the motor, right there, it doesn't have to be metal because your torque gets multiplied as you change your gear ratios. So this lower gear is going to have a higher speed and a lower torque. And then you follow it up to this bigger gear. This bigger gear is going to have a lower speed but a higher torque. And they've made up for that higher torque by having many teeth on this gear. The gear is very thick, it's very substantial, even though it's plastic, that it can handle the torque that that motor can put out. Then we have your other plastic gear. This is the third plastic gear. And what, what they've done here is they made this gear very substantial. It's very wide. The belt is also substantial. And then it's got pins. It's attached to this rotor, the shaft here, with pins to make sure that it doesn't slip on the shaft. So this, I would say, given these three gears, the one that I think would break first is potentially this one. But really, I think that these are good enough to handle the torque that this machine is going to put out. It appears as though everything went back together. I have no more screws left, so I think I, they all went in where they were supposed to. The next step that we're going to do for this sewing machine is an operational test, which means we are going to get out some data logging equipment and put this thing through its paces to see if it really is a Singer heavy duty sewing machine. Just to briefly go over our setup here, we have our Singer heavy duty sewing machine. Sewing machine is connected to our XTEC power analyzer which is going to give us how much power that this machine is taking. We're going to feed through three different types of fabric and multiple layers of each type of fabric. So we're going to start out with two layers, then four layers, then eight layers of each type of fabric. Uh, I have cotton, I have denim, and I have leather. Uh, the leather is going to be one layer, then two layers, then four layers. And each one is going to have particular type of needle for the appropriate material, two layers of cotton. This will be four layers of cotton. And this will be eight layers of cotton. Tell you, this machine is showing no signs of slowing down. Next run is going to be denim. This is two layers of denim. Here we go. Got four layers of denim with the denim needle. And then eight layers of denim. Again with the denim needle. So the eight layers is the one on the left. It's not the straightest stitch. This one, eight layers would be the one on the right. Probably could have adjusted the tension a little bit and it's, it's probably a little hard to tell. I will tell you it is easier to get Singer needles into this machine than it is to get Schmitz needles. So Singer is definitely one to sell you their needles. The Singer needles go in much easier. So now we're going to go through the leather, one layer of leather. Now we're going two layers of leather. Two layers is already hard to get under the foot.
four layers, that's a lot of leather. Also don't have much of a running. Am I not gonna be able to get this under there? No? Okay. Plan B, we're gonna go three layers just because that's what I have. So we've got a new untouched spot on this side. And I am pushing the foot up all the way as far as it'll go. All right, I can get three layers under there. Here we go. That is three layers of leather. That is as thick as I can fit underneath that presser foot and it did it like a champ. Did not skip a single stitch. That's a beautiful stitch. A little bit of zigzagginess, a little bit of um, out of alignment here on our bottom stitch, bottom thread. But overall, I mean, that looks really good. So now it's time to take a look at some of this data that we have. I need to look at you. You, not you, not that one. I need to look at you. Okay. So now let's look at some of this data that we took. Uh, got some interesting results with the Singer HD. This is definitely a heavy duty machine, I'll tell you that much, looking at this data. So uh, the first run, just doing two layers of cotton fabric. The easiest run that we have we had a peak current there, 0.74 amps, uh, which is just below the limit of the motor. So at this point, you're thinking, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this thing, and I'm, look, I'm like, we're almost at the limit of that motor, and we've only done two layers of material, so I don't think this thing's really going to do well at all during this. Uh, so then we look at some of the other data, and then we notice that current went down when it did four layers of cotton. So current went down to 0 0.70. Um, and then stayed right around that same level when it did eight layers. So there was really no change from two layers to eight layers of cotton material for this machine. Uh, in fact, you know, and it was probably because it wasn't even warmed up. We just went to sewing and um, so the first stitches were probably a little bit harder for the machine since, like I said, hadn't warmed up or anything. So there you go, the cotton, um, about 0.7 amps. And like I said, the limit for that motor or the, the rated current for that motor is 0.8 amps. Uh, and it can go above that just for short periods of time. That's if you're gonna run it for um, you know a few hours straight you don't want to exceed that 8, 0.8 amps over the entire time. So now let's look at denim. With the denim, now we're hitting about 0.75 amps for the two layers of denim. And then for three layers, it went up a little bit. We got 0.76, almost 0.77 amps. And then with the eight layers of denim, now we're at 0.74, so it went down again. So it stayed around the area of 0.75 for, the, for all the denim. So yes, denim was more difficult for it, but really it didn't care how many layers you were putting through it. And again, that's why I believe that this is a heavy duty machine. And then we look at the leather. So one layer of leather was 0.73 amps. So that was less current than what the denim took. And then with the two layers of leather, then we were at 0.78, almost 0.79 amps. So right below the rating of the motor at that point. And then once we hit the three layers, which we could barely fit under that presser foot, like I couldn't even fit four layers if I wanted to, um, we, we hit 0.82 amps. So that was right at the limit. So this machine is really, it's properly rated because we fit as much possible fabric as we could underneath that presser foot, and it was right at the limit of what the machine's motor could take. 
So this machine is a very well-designed, um, heavy-duty machine. I believe it is heavy-duty, and I believe it was also made to be maintained. So when you take off the, you can take off a minimum number of parts. So just this top part up here, and then you take off the bottom part, and you can get to the four major bearings that are inside this machine and actually oil those bearings and do the maintenance that you need to do for this machine. So um, that's really good. Plus, you know, like every machine, well, I shouldn't say every, but a lot of machines you can take off the front part and get to above the needle, all that. That's where you're going to get lint. That's where you're going to have to clean it out. It's also where you're going to have to oil a few of those pivot points there above the needle. So I do like this machine. I think it's made to be maintained and I think it's made to be heavy duty. So definitely a recommend and um, you know, disclosure really, there's not much disclosure to be made, although I am going to have an affiliate link. And like I said earlier in the video, Amazon affiliate link makes me some money, but it'll lose you a lot of money. So I recommend just going to singer.com and ordering this, but do your own research and see which one's cheaper. Um, I purchased this with my own money that I made through my business here, fixing sewing machines and the, the YouTube channel. So this was purchased with money. It was not uh, given to me or anything like that. Uh, but I do think that it's a good sewing machine and I recommend it. We're gonna be doing a video coming up where we compare an analog machine like this to a digital machine. So digital machines have computers inside of them that are controlling where the needle is and the hook is and all that kind of stuff. We're gonna compare the two. We're gonna see, and we're gonna use this power anal analyzer again, and see what the machines, two different styles of machines look like through the power analyzer, and also um, how they handle material and things like that. So um, that's an upcoming video we have. I really enjoyed geeking out with you today. I hope you enjoyed it too. Please give me a comment, let me know if I missed something, or let me know if there's something else you want to see. Thanks for watching.